In this video, we're going to have a look at amines and amides. As we start, it's useful to recognise that an amine is a derivative of ammonia, in which one or more of the hydrogens has been replaced by an alkyl group or a hydrocarbon chain. You can see in this example here, one of the hydrogens has been replaced by a carbon chain. And this is an example of a primary amine. So here we can also see um, an example of a primary amine. We've got our carbon chain here bonding onto our nitrogen which has its two hydrogens. Now that group on the end, the amine group, it's drawn in expanded form there, but you may also see it as NH2 within a structure. In this case here, you can see that two hydrogens have been replaced by carbon chains. And this is an example of a secondary amine. So down here we can see we've got our nitrogen in the middle there. We've got one, two carbon chains coming off of it. And we can see we've only got one hydrogen left bonding directly to the nitrogen. In this last example, we can see that there are now no hydrogens bonded directly to the nitrogen, but instead there are three carbon chains. So this is an example of a tertiary amine. So a structure such as this one where we've got three carbons coming directly off of the nitrogen would be an example of tertiary amine. Worth noting here that there are no hydrogens attached to the nitrogen. Another thing worth noting with your amines is that we have got hydrogens bonded directly to the nitrogen atom. What this means is that that functional group is going to be capable of hydrogen bonding. So that can increase the uh, melting and boiling point of substances which contain the amine functional group. Also, because it's capable of hydrogen bonding with um, polar water molecules, it can increase the solubility in particular situations due to the hydrogen bonds forming with water molecules. Another thing to note is that there is a pair of non-bonding electrons on the nitrogen. Um, so this has two important roles. Firstly, it means that that nitrogen can be hydrogen bonded to um, by a group which is capable of hydrogen bonding in a neighbouring molecule. And secondly, it is able to be protonated So when we're talking about an amine being protonated, what we're saying is that we are adding a proton to the structure. And you will recall that when we're referring to adding protons, we're actually talking about the hydrogen ion. So if we have a think about it here on our amine group, right, our amine group, we've got our non-bonding electron pair. Um, if we've got a hydrogen ion over here, it is able to come in and form a bond with those non-bonding electrons. So it's a little bit different than the covalent bonds that you're generally used to, where each, um, each atom bonding contributes one electron. In this case, nitrogen is contributing both electrons to the bond, um, and because of that, it's going to be left with a a positive charge.
So the structure we see down the bottom here is what we call the protonated form. We can see that the hydrogen has formed a bond with the nitrogen. Important to note that the positive charge needs to be shown next to the nitrogen atom. Due to this positive charge, so this pull, uh, full positive charge within the structure now, the molecule is now going to be able to iron dipole bond with polar water molecules. This ability to form iron dipole bonds with water molecules ultimately increases the structure's solubility in water. It's because of this we see a lot of drugs which contain the amine functional group delivered in the protonated form so that they are more soluble. So just to recap quickly what we've had a look at so far, uh, we've had a look at the basic structure of amines, um, recognising that they're derivatives of ammonia and that they can be classified as primary, secondary or tertiary amines depending on how many hydrogens or carbons the nitrogen is bonded to. The other important structural feature is that they can be protonated, um, which means that a hydrogen ion can bond to the nitrogen. By doing this, um, their solubility in water is increased due to the ability to iron dipole bond. One of the important reactions of amines is the, conden the condensation reaction that amines undergo with carboxylic acid to form a new structure called an amide. Now you're already familiar with condensation reactions. You've seen these when looking at the formation of esters. So you can think of this as pretty much the same except we are now um, joining a carboxylic acid and an amine as opposed to a carboxylic acid and an alcohol. So what we see happen here is we're going to lose an OH and an H and again they're going to join together to form water which sort of falls out of the structure which is why this is called a condensation reaction. And then where they come out, that carbon is now free to bond directly to the nitrogen. And we see this group down here form, which is our amide group. Now you can see I've drawn the structure with the carbonyl um, on one side of the structure and the hydrogen from the nitrogen on the other side of the structure. Um, it doesn't have to be like that. You can have them both on the same side or you can have them on alternate sides. I usually just draw them like this for um, the ease within the structure. Now just like esters, amides can undergo hydrolysis in both acidic and alkaline conditions. So in acidic conditions we've got the presence of hydrogen ions and water molecules are being added back into the structure. Um, so essentially what we're looking at doing is splitting our amide group between where our carboxyl and our amine used to be. And you can see what we end up with as the products of hydrolysis in acidic conditions is a carboxylic acid and a protonated amine. Now under alkaline conditions we've got essentially the same process happening but in this case we're only adding in a hydroxide ion, so a oxygen and a hydrogen. So we can see that the oxygen within the structure joins back onto our carbon here leaving us with a carboxyl ion and the hydrogen joins onto the amine group just leaving us with an amine.